she's dead, she's dead, she's dead. She's dead, she's dead. She brought too much misery to too many people. That's what I'm celebrating today, that she's not here any longer. Just one of the most early things I ever remember Thatcher for was removing school milk. Probably got me politically aware as a child. She described Nelson Mandela as a terrorist. She tried to hit all of us with a poll tax. It's her fault that we've got nothing to export to other countries. It was a preventable war. What she did, she destroyed us. I tried to destroy us and tried to break us. But she didn't. I've been waiting for her to die since I was five years old. She said she wouldn't engage with terrorists and yet she was a friend of Pinochet's. I thought she was an evil bitch and I'm glad she's dead. I would dance in her grave if I could. I think what she did was quite distasteful really, wasn't it? So it's just people showing their feelings. I think she's fine. Now she's dead. I'm sad you are dead, Mrs T. Even though you were daft in the head for years before you were dead in your bed at the Ritz as Dave's friends, Tony's friends at the Sun, so cruelly, cruelly said. I'm glad your full life came to an end in a suite of rooms paid for by kind friends, with one nurse to hold hands and stroke head, another to soft perch your eggs on white bread. Carefully to watch, to check at night the door is locked, to snooze in the chair, answer the phone, and make sure you were never alone when you cried out in the night. When you cried. I'm sad you are dead, Mrs. T. Very sad. Because you're just a human being at the end of the day. Like me, or my nan, and a proper old lady. And I passed history, English history, I mean, I managed to be. And I've looked at the facts, and I don't buy you were evil. Like some evil bitch who enjoyed people's struggles, a sadistic old witch. I think perhaps you were blind sometimes, and deaf. I think you couldn't put yourself in other folk's shoes. But I understand, you were strong, so I thought everyone else could manage along. I don't think you had much imagination. I'm sad you are dead, Mrs T. But I am glad you are not Mrs H, from our end, the Macmillan estate. Little and white and tidily bent, buttoned up with a cap of grey curls. You cleaned, my mum says, at her very first school, giving sweets and a smile and a 10p piece to the kids who best kept the clerk rooms neat. She was made redundant when the council put the school's cleaning contract out to tender and spanking clean one. Moving on, after Jack, her bus driver hubby, died to clean Atley House the council old folks home, where her best friend Lily ended her days, and where she thought there might be a chair, spare, by a window somewhere, with her name on it. She worked five days a week, from nine till five, 1992 till 2009, when they closed the place down. They closed it first, actually, in 1989, along with the community drop-in centre, but it reopened after a press campaign led by a Coronation Street actor of now dubious fame. I'm sad you are dead, Mrs T. Mrs H, I don't know what to say, except it started in the usual way. She forgot her keys, kept forgetting pension day to pay her lecky, her windows, which were always spanking clean, looked dirty, and the grass, which had been neat, grew long and whiskery. A pane in her front door somehow broke, and she mended it with plastic bags, 
and a skipping rope. She got thin, talked to herself in the library. She kept her old shoes on, soulless, with sellotape and pins. Her matted hair she prettified with a yellow paper bow. Someone called her son in Australia. My mum agonised for a week, then called social services, who, when Mrs H didn't answer the door, looking through the letterbox, left reassured by the glass bowl full of fruit. They didn't realise the bananas, apples, oranges and pears were plastic. And anyway, they had bulging filing cabinets, caseloads, bucket loads, and they were moving, again, the office, to be more centralised, which was cost efficient. The challenges of the estate too complex for the grades of workers currently most active in that troubled area. The truth was, apart from A&E or a cell where she'd have company and a hot cup of tea, there was nowhere for Mrs H to be, to go. You can't have care in the community. If there's no community or care, my nan said. She started to wonder, sometimes at night, looking for Jack back in the old bus garages where they had talked and first kissed. She was picked up after several weeks absence, walking down the M1 without even her old knickers on. I am glad, Mrs T, very glad, you didn't suffer that indignity. I am glad you didn't live for three weeks in a derelict gent's toilet, eating dog food left by a good-hearted Englishman, a toff living at the workhouse, which is luxury apartments now, a gated community with pool and spa. Dog food left for a stray. I am glad, Mrs T, one night, in the street, asleep, you didn't wake to a boot in the throat. I am glad at 81 you weren't pushed against a wall and raped. I am glad you died in your sleep, not in the street like poor Mrs H. I am sad. You are dead, Mrs T. I hated the city street parties. Dancing and burning dummies. I hated that song. See how they'd like it. If it was their mum or nan or them. But as your coffin passed, the gun carriage, and the crowd fell silent. In the rain, one lone voice made me cry, makes me cry. Goodbye, Maggie, it said. Goodbye, Mrs. T. God bless. God bless, God bless society. Thank you.